Hello guys, welcome to Earthing Metallurgy and welcome to part 3 of uh, the GATE 2021 memory based question solving sessions. So I hope uh, the last two videos gave you some idea about uh, you know some questions which we uh, remembered and again if you feel that we missed some questions after posting all these questions you can just DM us on WhatsApp or email us. So let's get started with this part now. So the first question. So the first question is a very important and an easy question based on Bragg's law. Okay. So what they gave is that they are telling that we have an FCC material. Okay. We have an FCC material and they said that the first peak is actually at 30 degrees. Okay. The theta value is 30 degrees and you need to calculate the angle at which the second peak is obtained. That's it. That's it. This is the given, uh, this, give, this is the given uh, information about it. So how to go about it? So you have to be very much clear when you see FCC material. So in FCC, what is the condition that you see, uh, you know, that the Bragg's law is satisfied? You see when H, K and L are unmixed, what is it? That means all are odd or all are even. So from here you can get the values of H, K and L. What is H, K and L? The different planes. So from here basically we have 1, 1, 1 as the first plane and what is the second one? Second one is 2, 0, 0. So basically you need to calculate theta for this plane or there is one more uh, way to go about it. What is Bragg's law in lambda equal to 2d sine theta, correct? So from here again what we can write d is equal to lambda equal to 2 into a by root h square plus k square plus l square into sine theta, right? So from here for a given lambda and for a given material a and lambda are constant that means sine theta is proportional to h square plus k square plus l square that oh, root of right from here what you can see that the sine square theta is proportional to root okay so root will go now this h square plus k square plus l square beautiful relation just using the Bragg's law we directly got this so what you need to do now Simply put theta 1 and theta 2. So, sin square theta 1 by sin square theta 2 is equal to how much? First one is 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square. Second one is 2 square 4 plus 0 plus 0. Therefore, this is sin square 30 by sin square theta 2 equal to 3 by 4. From here, you get theta 2 on solving approximately about 35.3 degrees very simple and very beautiful question so if you see from fcc material you can see how much is the information that we got from fcc you got the extinction condition or the condition which Bragg's law is satisfying from there you calculated your hkl values which are 111 200 etc then you use the Bragg's law condition and tried out to get some relation, some proportionality between the angle theta and your HKL values. And interestingly, this is something which you finally achieved. Okay. And from there we got it. And of course, the, uh, no need to do all this also. For FCC, the sine square theta ratio will be what? 3 is to 4. That's it. And so on. 3 is to 4 is to... Three is to four is to eight is to eleven is to twelve and so on. Three is to four is to eight is to eleven is to twelve and so on. Similarly for this is for FCC. Similarly for BCC, the same ratio will be one is to two is to four is to 8 is to etc. Oh, sorry, 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 6 is to 8 etc. 
whereas for diamond cubic the same ratio will be 3 is to 8 is to 11 is to 32 and etc so these are the values which uh, if you can directly remember this question is pretty much easy for you right which is an excellent question the next question again one of the easy question octahedral void based on the octahedral void so they said that you have a bcc iron okay in bcc iron what is the maximum size of an atom that can sit in the octahedral void without any distortion so pretty much easy right we know what is the formula for fcc what is the formula for bcc for bcc octahedral voids the maximum size is 0.155 r and also they gave r value which is 0.124 nanometer so just put that over here 0 0.155 into 0 0.124 how much let me calculate it for you guys here itself what is it 0 0.155 into 0 0.124 and your answer would be 0 0.01922 nanometer that's it i think they asked for three decimal so 0 0.019 will be your answer a direct question again from you no know, previous years or a simple concept okay the next question is an interesting question based on welding okay based on welding so what they gave is they gave uh, about the power okay uh, i think the power is about 30000 watt and they also gave speed okay actually i don't remember the speed okay some speed is given to us and also they gave something called as melting factor i think the speed is 10.6 uh, mm per second if i'm not wrong okay melting factor is given and also the heat transfer factor is given okay and they want the area of cross section you need to calculate the area of cross section so how to go about and calculate area of cross section from power speed and everything it's pretty much easy so we have something called as linear heat input what is this this is nothing but this explains you about how much of heat is actually transferred or how much of heat is actually at least generated onto the body this is equal to power by speed so here this is 30,000 watt. What is watt joule per second divided by 10.6 mm per second. So this, this gets cancelled. So from here uh, you will be getting something, some value in joule per mm. Okay. And also you have been given some volume. I guess some volume is given to us. Okay. So now what you need to do now oh yeah they gave the overall power yeah i got it so they gave the power utilized okay again i don't remember the values but they gave some power utilized in joule per mm cube now interestingly this is the total heat generated by the arc but is this equal to the total power utilized no you must be remember carefully the total power utilized is always not 100 percentage why because we know that the efficiency of any process in this world is not 100 percentage so the heat input into the heat transfer factor which is i think 0 0.6 and the melting factor is 0 0.5 so what do this heat transfer factor telling me that if I have some 100 joules of energy only 0.6 times that means only 60 joules can be transferred to the workpiece right so welding usually we arc uh, with the help of arc we generate some heat but usually we know we do at room temperature so there may be radiation there may be convections into the atmospheres so there are heat losses. So only 60% in this case is going into the body, right? So that is considered here. So the total heat generated into the heat transfer factor is the heat that is actually transferred into the body. 
बट इज दिस हीट अगेन कंप्लीटली यूटिलाइज और इज दिस पावर कंप्लीटली यूटिलाइज फॉर मेल्टिंग नो वाई बिकॉज वी ऑल्सो हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड एज मेल्टिंग फैक्टर दैट मीन्स द विच इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव और फिफ्टी परसेंटेज दैट मीन्स इफ यू गिव हंड्रेड जॉल ऑफ एनर्जी ट्रांसफर टू द बॉडी ओनली फिफ्टी जॉल इज यूज फॉर मेल्टिंग ऑफ इट राइट सो द टोटल हीट यूटिलाइज इज इक्वल टू द टोटल हीट ट्रांसफर्ड हाउ डिड वी गेट दैट by multiplying the heat input into heat transfer factor now you want the total power utilized for melting so this is the total power utilized for melting actually okay that is equal to heat input into heat transfer factor into melting factor okay so in the terms of heat transfer factor and melting factor what we did we just considered the losses into the atmospheres we just considered the losses the heat losses so we know the heat input from here we know the total power utilized for melting again this is in joule per mm cube therefore you need to convert this so you need to multiply area into the total power utilized which will give me the same joule per meter joule per mm unit so unit balance is also very very important in this question okay so area into total power utilized for melting is equal to the heat input into heat transfer factor into melting factor on doing everything everything is known melting factor is given heat transfer factor is given heat input you can easily calculate using the formula that is power by speed total power is given only unknown is this area here you can just take this guy on the other side and you can easily calculate area that's a brilliant question so people usually tend to forget these melting factors but you must always consider heat losses when of course on an industrial scale or any practical scenario remember that there will be heat losses and they implemented the same scenario into this process into this problem by giving these particular uh, melting factors and the heat transfer factor again a very good question very well standard question i would say from welding the next question now uh, let's say we have uh, a vacancy concentration question okay now we have a vacancy concentration question what do we have in that so basically uh, let's say on i mean not let's say but this is the question uh, the question says that on going from 27 degrees to 127 degrees celsius the vacancy concentration okay let me write n by n not is actually doubled okay from here to here this guy doubled okay now they want to calculate the enthalpy of these vacancy formation so this is a direct formula so let's say equilibrium vacancy concentration let me put it as xv is equal to x v is equal to e x p of minus delta h by r t this is the formula direct formula so what you do so x1 by x2 is equal to 1 by 2 because they said it got doubled is equal to e x p of minus delta h by r okay let me take it as common now what i get here i get here as 1 by t1 minus 1 by 2 2 right so this is 27 so this is 1 by 300 minus 1 by 127 is 400 okay so again that's it so here you have on bringing this side you have ln of 0.5 is equal to minus delta h by r into 1 by 300 minus 1 by 400 again an easy question only thing is you need to know the formula here okay let me calculate so also you guys can calculate while uh, watching this okay so ln of 0.5 which gives me a negative value so minus minus gets cancelled into r is 8.314 divided by reciprocal of 300 minus reciprocal of 400 that's equal to delta h is equal to 6915.39 joule per mole or whatever i don't remember the unit exactly what they followed but again but i remember that they asked this value in terms of 
kilojoules. So this will be 6.915. Again, an easy question and uh, you know, a simple basic question for two mark. Only thing is that this step while using get calculator, if you are not making any mistakes, you see how I did, right? So you can easily use get calculator in just one step. You can directly go and get the answer, right? So this is one more important part where we have discussed some good two mark questions of uh, GATE MT 2021. If you like, please hit the like button and also share with all the GATE metallurgy aspirants who already wrote and who are uh, also writing in the future so that they know the standard of the paper this time. I feel the standard of the paper has been good, at least uh, from the last three to four years. This paper is very good, I felt. So yeah, I hope many of you will crack with very great ranks and you know come out with flying colors from this gate so yeah that's it from my side in this video if you like it please hit the like button and also share and do subscribe to everythingmetallurgy.com yeah do subscribe to everything metallurgy youtube channel and uh, yeah 5000 is near do make 5000 subscribers soon thank you guys thanks for watching we'll meet you again in the next video